I just pulled uh, what's called the iliac crest. That's the top of each hip bone that you can feel if you press your fingers into the sides of your hips. I just pulled mine up a little bit higher and made a little bit more of this jelly bean shape so that we can see um, into the depths of the pelvis. Also falls on the midpoint of every person is their hip joint. So your hip joint is the joint that actually rotates when you lift your leg. Like if you're marching, if you place your fingers right where you feel like your leg is lifting from, where that bend starts, that's your hip joint. So we're going to draw another uh, ball and socket joint there, just a circle to represent that. And then at this point, I like to connect the uh, head, torso, and pelvis with a little neck. We'll put a little neck here. And remember, these are um, skeleton necks, not muscle and fat and skin. So they're gonna be skinnier than a real neck. So don't think it looks funny because of that. And then here's my backbone, my spine. That's gonna connect my torso to my pelvis. And I'm going to erase just the very bottom of my rib cage here so that it goes behind. Because remember we said this is the back side of the rib cage that dips down. And what also happens to fall at the midpoint of the human body is your wrists. So way out at the edge of your box so that we have room to put the legs in, you're gonna put a smaller circle to indicate the wrist joint. And just like we did with the upper arm, we're gonna connect the lower arm just with a straight line. So that's gonna represent our two bones that are there, the major bones, the radi radius and the ulna. There's not a major landmark that hits here actually, besides, um, I'm sorry, here at the bottom of five heads, uh, besides the center thigh. So we're gonna skip down to the bottom of the sixth head and what goes there is the bottom of your knee. So if the bot, this is basically where your knee bends. So you're gonna put two more circles for the knee joints at the base of head six. And let's space these out a little bit so that your person has room to stand. You, you don't want their feet all scrunched together. There's my knee joint. Now we can actually connect the hips to the knees very simply, the same way that we connected the arms. So hip joint to knee with a straight line. And that's your big thigh bone we're indicating right there. And hip joint to knee on the other side. And I want you to notice how the um, leg bones are coming in at an angle to, to the knees. That's how everyone's bones attach to the joints right there. So let's make the top of that ankle joint at the halfway mark of head eight. From top to bottom, there's the halfway mark and that's gonna be the top of the ankle. So again, let's connect our knees to our ankle joints with a single straight line, representing the bones and the legs. And then finally we get to the feet. And the feet are just triangles actually, which are really convenient. And if we have time this semester, I'll show you how you can start with triangles and break them down into feet pretty simply. So you are going to create an angle coming out of each foot that is more open on the outside and 
it's gonna be a vertical line on the inside. On the inside here, vertical line, and a more open angle on the outside. And there's your feet, and I like to give them a little toe box at the base. So just create a little cube at the bottom, and that's where your toes are gonna go. Let's move back up and sketch in the hands. And your, the, your fingertips reach mid-thigh. So uh, at some point I want each of you to stand up and just pay attention to where your fingertips hit your legs as you stand. And to draw the hands, we're going to have two lines come out of the wrist that go straight down, and then two longer lines that angle in towards the leg that make up the fingers. So there's the palm of the hand with the two straight lines, the fingers with the longer ones, and then we can just attach a little thumb right there. So same thing on the other side, two lines straight down, little short ones, two lines angling in towards the figure for the longer fingers, and then we'll add a little thumb right there. And last thing, let's go back all the way up top to the head. We don't need that initial circle anymore that we used to create the skull shape, so let's erase that. And I want you to put your eye line in. So halfway between the head and the chin, we know is the eyes. You learned that last week. And right there, you're gonna draw a simple line curving around the head because all the features on your face curve around your head. So now we have the center line of the face and we have the eye line going around. And there's your little eight foot tall skeleton.